Kinetics fast site at Hasler is home to around 200 engineers, scientists, technicians and craftsmen and we've been the home of naval hydrodynamics now for well over a century. At the heart of the Hasler site is our flagship facility, the Ocean Basin. It's one of the largest facilities of its type in the world and it's what we use for most of our manoeuvring and sea keeping prediction tests. Constrained tests are conducted using the rotating arm here, which has a maximum speed of 0.6 of a radian per second. That works out as a linear speed of around 30 miles an hour. And that's used to measure manoeuvring coefficients, primarily for submarine bodies, so that we can feed those coefficients into our manoeuvring prediction software to define the safe manoeuvring limitation envelope for a submarine. Most of the tests that we conduct in the basin utilize remote control free running models, primarily our two submarine research models. The submarine research model is a pretty unique facility in that at its core is this pressurised pressure hull cylinder uh, and around that we can clad all sorts of different external hull form geometries so it can take the form uh, of many different submarine classes. The model is capable of recording everything that's going on that it's doing uh, so it records all of its positioning, its depth, its roll, pitch and heading. The real benefit of a free-running model like this is, is just the tangible demonstration of how the submarine behaves. So the customer can see what it does, uh, ourselves as, as naval architects and engineers can see how it behaves. And at the early design stage we can decide if that's acceptable and, and start to look at changes that might be required. Across one end of the basin we have an array of 122 independently actuated paddles which act as our wave maker, capable of generating waves up to about 0.8 of a metre in height. And we can operate all of the paddles in unison to create what we call long crested waves, or we can play tunes with the phasing to create oblique waves or short crested seas, the more representative of what's out there in the ocean. What we're trying to represent here are the real conditions that ships will encounter at sea. And it's important to know the motions of a vessel because the crew have to be able to operate their vessel safely. The ship tank facility has a length of 270 metres, 12.2 metres wide and 5.4 metres deep. So that makes it by far the largest facility of its type in the UK. And it's where we do all of our straight lined, constrained testing. And we also have a wave maker at the end of the facility that's capable of generating waves up to 0.4 of a metre in height. The carriage has a maximum speed of 12.25 metres a second and a maximum acceleration of 1.1 metres per second squared. The facility provides a safe and secure location for commercial and defence clients to come in with novel ideas and evaluate them under tightly controlled conditions. Our cavitation tunnel, the largest in the UK, is used primarily for measuring cavitation inception performance. Cavitation occurs when the local pressure drops below the vapour pressure of water, so the water boils. It vaporises not because of high temperature but because of low pressure. And so we have this three-storey building with a working section, an impeller down at the base of the tunnel that drives the water around in a continuous loop. What we're looking at here is um, inception of cavitation um, on a propeller. Cavitation has quite a, a big impact on hydroacoustic signatures, which is important for our, our defence clients, and it can also cause problems with erosion on the, the blade surfaces as well. We are looking to simulate the conditions for the inception of cavitation. We do this by changing the flow speed, changing the propeller RPM, potentially the, the water pressure as well. And the way we look at cavitation is either using a system with um, high-speed cameras or using a strobe system which essentially gives the illusion of frozen motion and we can actually observe where cavitation starts. I love Hasler. Uh, I've worked here all my life. My passion is model testing and the real joy of it is in the analysis of the data at the end of an experiment. Seeing the quality of what comes out and knowing that that's going to make a difference to ship operators uh, and to the safety of crews at sea. Uh, that's what makes it all worthwhile. This is the diving and hyperbaric test facility. In here, the Kinetics diving research team and submarine escape rescue team do their research using the facilities that are housed in this building. This is the experimental diving tank. Uh, this tank is a three meter by three meter by three meter tank. Uh, it can contain fresh or salt water. Uh, predominantly, its use is for acoustic signatures. Obviously any diving equipment on a diver in water is making noise. So that acoustic signature is important and the Ministry of Defence has a standard 
uh, to which it requires the diving equipment to maintain the noise signature below. Because it's a temperature control tank, we can uh, chill it down to two degrees and increase the temperature up to 40 degrees. That enables us to do thermal experiments with divers in a safe, benign environment. The facility works in tandem with NEMO, um, and NEMO is a thermally instrumented mannequin. He's the only NEMO unit in Europe, and we can test uh, all sorts of diving equipment and even sea survival equipment using NEMO. NEMO will tell us the thermal protection afforded by those ensembles. So we can put them in multiple layers and we can tell our clients, be that commercial or Ministry of Defence again, you know, which clothing ensemble is going to best protect an individual in a cold environment. The hyperbaric trials unit is a pair of spheres uh, that are capable of operating down to 1,500 metres and they allow us to uniquely test submarine escape equipment that is the escape suits that individuals are wearing to escape from a submarine and the air supplies that would go into an escape tower. The high flow rig is a containerized rig and it allows us to test valves and pneumatic equipment up to four inch diameter. Most of our customers are commercial companies who need to test their valves at high flow and long periods of time so that they know that the valve will close after a period of icing up and most of their valves are being supplied to the Ministry of Defence. The uniqueness of the facility is, is simply the size or the capacity of the cylinders that we have. We have three cylinders at 1600 litres and we can charge them up to 350 bar air pressure. The Life Support Systems Laboratory is a, a couple of facilities that allow us to test uh, both Ministry of Defence diving equipment and commercial equipment we attach a mechanical lung device, so a breathing machine effectively to the equipment, and that replicates the, the, the human lung, i.e. it takes out oxygen and puts carbon dioxide in. So we can replicate what goes on in a rebreather circuit and therefore validate that the soda lime is removing the carbon dioxide as it should. The experience and the expertise of the, the guys who work in that laboratory means they're perfectly able to conduct a forensic examination. So, for instance, if a diving equipment had a fault, the Ministry of Defence send that diving equipment to us and we can assess that diving equipment for the fault or try and find what fault occurred and how and why it occurred. We also have a United Kingdom Accreditation Service Assess Laboratory, which enables us to do gas analysis of the gas within the cylinder and analysis of the soda lime that was used in any incident sets. As an ex-submariner, when I was at sea, uh, I was on a, on a platform and at 300 feet we had a leak. I knew that the science that the guys on this site provide meant that I would have had the best chance, should I have needed to, of getting out of that submarine. My son is presently at sea in a submarine, so I'm here to make sure that the team continue that work to protect all submariners and divers in their work environment. Thank you.